Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome to another episode of the Epic Conquerors. As always, I have Mama J, Dr. Judy Bauer, a.k.a. The General, with oh, me dear. today. <laughs> How are you doing, Mama J? I'm doing really super duper. How about you? I'm doing great. You know, Mom J, it's always amazing how God gives us this revelation right at the perfect time for the current situation. Do you yeah. say that, Ron? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are always amazed how we have so many conversations around these things, and it's just mind boggling in the natural how God is so up to the minute and point on every time we get into his word, it's just relevant. Yeah, the word is so, like you said, so relevant. Yes, many people you speak to them like, oh, that's just an old storybook from way back when. I'm like, oh, well, you're obviously not, you're obviously not digging into it because every time I open that book, I get different revelation. And yeah. right now, you know, this episode, I think, which is thanks to our sponsor, the Holy Spirit. That's um, right. We're gonna dive, <laughs> we're gonna dive right into it and uh, and and have a look and see what uh, what the Lord has for us as we go through this. Psalms 84, 11, 12. I think a title for this episode would be God Gives Grace and Glory. And just to have a discussion around that, because that means so much when we understand the significance of that. And what a privilege that we get God's grace and glory in our life. Wow. So, yeah, let's, yeah. let's do it. And get all the nuggets and out of there. And just before we start, obviously, I want to give that plug once again. Don't forget about Mama J's brand new book in Amazon, The Quiet Brook. <laughs> Get your copy today. Unashamed. Get your copy. <laughs> Unashamed. Unashamed. <laughs> well, Mama J, I, I actually pulled, um, so I, when I was going through this, I looked at um, the Psalms 84, 11, 12 in the New King James Version. And it says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Mm, wow. That's beautiful. Such a powerful verse. Yeah. yeah. Another translation says he's our light and our protector. They both mean the same thing. Um, when we think about that, that God is, all of that and many bags of chips. I mean, it's like he is so multifaceted that he can be all those things to us simultaneously. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I just am always in awe of how awesome our God is. I mean, especially that first verse, it says for Jehovah, and this is, I'm reading it out of, out of obviously, yeah, the quiet brook. Yeah. It says for Jehovah, God is our light and our protector. I mean, what an amazing way to start it. He's our light. So obviously he's lighting the path for us ahead of us. So even in dark times, or no matter what you're going through, God is going to light up the path. and He's going to give you that direction. So that's another promise that we obviously receiving. And then on top of that, he's our protector. Wow. So when you're going through all these trials and tribulations, just lean on him. Yeah. Yeah. He's big enough to strong arm anything. Right. So he, you can lean on him with great confidence. He will protect us from evil. There's actually no evil, Chad, that can act, that can separate us from the love of God, right? So we may go through things that are painful or that are harassing or that are uh, calamities to us, but still God is with us, protecting us from things that we don't even understand. So Sometimes we do go through things that are very difficult. And we say, where is God as our protector? But he's there protecting us from things we don't even know we need protecting from. So we just have to trust and know that he is our light. He is our son. He is our shield. He's our protector. And just walk under the unction of those words that he is who he says he is. No matter what our flesh is screaming at us because of our circumstances. You say there's no evil that can basically come against us, right? That can, and, and that's an inter interesting concept. So it's, there, there really is no evil that can, that can deter us or take us off that path, but it's ourself, right? It's our own fleshly 
desires or, you know, when we, when we fall out of line with what God's will or his word is, that allows us to basically be taken astray. Well, because it, the one uh, translation in that scripture, and I can't think of the reference of the one we're trying to quote here, but no actual evil can harm it. But the actual evil there is that separation from God, because that's that would be the ultimate evil that would be separated from God and spend eternity in eternal damnation, right? So no matter how much evil or persecution or situations may come against us, nothing can actually separate us from the love of God. Nothing can. So therein we take comfort because even if we do go through tumultuous things, which we do, people do. I mean, we go through rough stuff. People get um, their homes broken into. They get, um, I want to use words like raped or whatever. All kinds of things happen that are not pleasant. They're not fun to go through. But that can't separate you from the love of God and spending eternity with God and having God heal you and restore you from that situation. And sometimes, you know, God uses cracked pots. Sometimes the things that we go through are because God knows that if we will trust him through it, which he knows we will do that because he knows our heart. He can then take those places where we've had injury or we've had a, a tumultuous thing. And shining his light through it, he's our light and our protector. We can actually radiate the presence and the love of God for other people to get healed from their injuries and things that they've incurred. So God uses us as his hands and feet sometimes and allows us to go through things that we're like, why do I have to go through this? But then when we get further on down the road and we see how God has healed us and restored us, and we begin to say, thank you, God, that you allowed me to go through that because now. I have wisdom that I've gained from that. I've got some comfort to give someone, some empathy to give someone, because I know what they're going through. And I've been through it, and God's healed me. So we we don't need to draw back and, and have fear of going through tough stuff, because God will always work it out for our good. Woo, hallelujah. I'm preaching myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> woo, woo. Yeah, when, when the, in that verse where it says, the Lord will give grace and glory on the one that I was reading. It's so amazing because you've got to sit back and actually think about what does that actually mean, grace and glory? So, I mean, right out the gate, it gives us converting grace, the first grace, you know, the grace of salvation. Yes. Like, you know, which is amazing. He gives us sanctifying grace. Yes. Yeah. You know, he sanctifies us. Yes. I mean, and there's just so many things. He gives us all kinds of faith and hope and love and everything else. Yeah, I think sometimes we discount the fact of just how amazing God is and just how much he gives us or how much he puts out for us. And it's really just about us receiving it yes. and actually just reaching out and taking it. But the strange thing is how, how many people just turn their nose up at that yeah. and, and, they, and, and they just don't receive what God has for them. Well, sometimes we don't know to receive it. So that's kind of sometimes the issue. And that's one reason why Epic Conquerors to me, Epic standing for everything possible in Christ. If we know what's possible, then we can hold on to it and we can walk in it. But if we don't know about it, how can we live in it, right? But sometimes even when they know about it, Mama Jay, they still don't walk in it. Or no, we that's don't why we it. have to be reminded again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we do this podcast over that's and over right. and over. That's right. <laughs> to remind ourselves and our beautiful community. That's right. That's right. You know, grace is such a powerful word because grace is not something that blankets us so that we can sin and do whatever we want to do. And God just wink, winks at it and just uh, turns a blind eye to it. No, that's not what grace is for. That's not what grace is about. No, not at all. Doesn't just right? cover all sin, cover everything and just. Oh, chatting. You know better than that. <laughs> You're just messing with me now. But yep. grace is divine favor for our regeneration and sanctification. It's, it's the empowerment that we need to live godly in the midst of our difficult times. So if God is our light and our protector, our son and our shield, then he gives us the grace to be empowered to live under his light and under his protection while we're going through things that are painful to ourselves, perhaps. So that's, a, it's like a grease in the wheel. You know, It's like grace is applied so that we can move through things and not get stuck. So I think that's kind of cool. Well, and someone would ask, well, how do I receive that grace? Well, for one, by faith, just like everything else, right? <laughs> 
to say, Lord, I'm in a situation. I feel like I'm stuck in it. I feel like I'm paralyzed by it. But you said you give me grace. And so I'm going to just receive your grace by faith to move me through this situation so that I come out of it. Like we've talked in many times past, like um, without even the smell of smoke, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and like Daniel coming out of the lion's den, he didn't get eaten for lunch. So, you know, God is able to deliver us and we come out of it. We don't have the scars of that situation hindering us any longer, but it's a divine grace. It's an empowerment. It's an enabling to walk through things. I mean, I've watched you in the last 10 years walk through a lot of things, and I've seen God's grace come upon you for different situations that you've faced. And I watch you just move right on through it and right on through it. And here we are almost 10 years down the road now. Look where you are now compared to where you were 10 years ago. That's God's yeah. grace. Without yeah. that grace, you wouldn't be who Chad is today. And I think the, the thing about grace, Mama Jo, is that and, and God's word says it, you get enough grace for today. It's like, yeah. you don't get, you, when you start that journey, like even in my own personal journey, 10 years ago, you never got the grace for the next 10 years. You got that grace for that one particular day. And then if you walked in that grace, then God would give you the grace for the next following day yeah. and on and on and on. Um, and I think that's, you know, and yeah, we are, like you said, 10 years later or even more. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. A little longer than that, but yeah, 10 years I've walked this road with you. So yeah, it's yeah. good. It's awesome. But then he gives glory. Now glory. I really like, because sometimes we think, what is glory? Is that just like a brilliant sunset at night, you know, and you just see that a magnificent coloring and is that God's glory? I mean, what is glory? But glory is God's splendor. It's his majesty. It's his holiness and all that. But the glory that he gives us is when we get to experience God's presence in a tangible way. You know, sometimes when you're praising the Lord or something and all of a sudden you just feel this weightiness come on you, on your hands or a warmth comes on your body or something like that. But you just have this tangible awareness of the weightiness of God's glory of himself bestowing on you honor and esteem and dignity because you're his child, you're a king's kid. And so he puts that weightiness on you, that tangible sense of his presence so that you know that you know that God is with you in this situation. I love that so much. So powerful when you actually receive that. Yeah. I mean, knowing that God is with you. I mean, for me, when I read Psalms 84 and I went, went, went through the entire Psalm, it, to me, it's, it's such a, an amazing Psalm because it's, 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 it's a Psalm that's giving you hope. Yeah. You know, it gives you hope of, of you know, and, and I think, it, I mean, if we go back, Mama J, when was this Psalm, what was the situation when Psalm 84 was written? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just wondering because it's, it's, it's such an empowering Psalm. It's like, it just, it's, it's so full with hope and how God covers you. And like you said, it gives you, it gives you, you know, grace and glory and all the rest of that stuff. And, uh, so I just, I just, most I just of all of David's psalms that he wrote that are similar to this in, in messaging is always when he was on the run for his life. So that's why <laughs> he could relate to receiving all of these things from the Lord. But you know, it's interesting how, like in Psalms 8, verse 4, it asks the question, you know, who are we as men and women that God would be mindful of us? or that he would even be concerned about us. I mean, what is it that's so special about it that God gives a rip about being our life? Thanks for to think about us. You know, who are we that he would be mindful of us? I mean, this is the almighty God that he cares enough about us. And then verse five says, and you go so far as to even crown us with your glory. I mean, mm. God doesn't have to do all this. He could just say, look, you know, uh, I give you salvation if you accept it. And then that's end of it. But he just keeps giving and giving and giving us more and more of himself all the time because he wants that relationship. He wants us to know him and all about him, but to think that he crowns us with glory, with a sense of his presence. I was so blessed just a few days ago to go away to celebrate my 50th anniversary of being baptized in the Holy spirit. Whoop, 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 evidence whoop, whoop, whoop. In tongue. It was so amazing. But when I walked into this particular room that I had set aside to just have an audience with the king, as soon as I walked in the room, just the weightiness or the glory of God's presence just rested upon me. And it's just so 
majestic. Is it tan- did you feel it like tangibly? Was yeah. It like yes. I, just all over there was just this sense of, yes, you know, we just had that connection there in a way that I could discern it. So yeah. I just think when I read this, you know, how mindful is God of us? He doesn't need to be, but he just is because he loves us that much. Wow. So Mama, t- Mama J, just to digress for a second, tell us about that experience, <laughs> that, that tangibility of just feeling the presence of God as you were, as you were there celebrating this 50th year well, of baptism. Yeah, experiencing the presence of God is, is um, multifaceted as well. It's just kind of like when we uh, are around one another as humanity. I mean, sometimes you sense people's closeness in a different way from time to time. It's every time you meet up, it's kind of a different experience. And in that same way, we can't like buttonhole God down to say, you know, if you don't come upon me in such a way like this every time, then I'm not sure you're even here. You know, (laughs) we have to just accept and receive what part of himself he does choose to bestow upon us. But there will always be that sense of he's here. But there's been many a time in my life where I've had an audience with the king and I set aside time to be with the Lord and just stand in his presence or dance before him or sing before him or what have you. And it it feels like he's nowhere. (laughs) But then by faith, you just accept the fact that you know what you're doing is by faith. You know that you just want to reverence him. You just want to um, respect him. You just want to appreciate him and honor him. And later on down the road, then all of a sudden there'll come a time where God just comes right all on you and you weren't maybe doing anything necessarily to bring that about, <laughs> but he just shows up like, ah, oh, here I am, you know, and you're like, oh God, you're so amazing. And you just, sometimes just little silent tears will run down your face because he touches you. Like we talked in our last podcast episode about that customized touch that God oh, has for us as our high priest, which is so beautiful. So one person might need to sense him this way and another person sitting right next to you might need to sense him in a different kind of way to minister to them. So we can't buttonhole God and say, oh, it's gotta be like this or I didn't really have the full enchilada. You know, it's like, <laughs> let God be God and touch you how he wants to touch you um, because that's his prerogative. Yeah, that's so important. Cause I think sometimes, like you said, we kind of create this narrative of how we want it to be. And then when it doesn't show up that way, we're like, well, you know, God's not really here. And it doesn't feel like he's even you know, in my life anymore. And meantime, he's there all the time. It's just, you know, it's just a different situation, different season, different whatever it might be. And boy, when that happens, yeah, the enemy comes in and shoo, right away to just try to bring discouragement and just get you to throw in the towel or whatever, because ha, oh, God didn't show up. It's like, yeah. oh, shut up. You, yeah. And you forget he's God. He doesn't have to show up the way you want him to show up. No, he's, <laughs> he's with us, whether we feel him or not. Yeah. So that's really powerful. In fact, that's the next portion of this verse is no good thing will he withhold from those who walk along his path. And that's another part of that acceptance by faith to realize no matter what's going on, It might not feel so good right now, but God's busy with it, working things out for our good. And he will not withhold anything that would be for our benefit. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we feel like we're not getting all of this, whatever that we should get. But if we understand this scripture, we have to have then that understanding by faith that this must not be good for me if it's not happening. Because God said he would not withhold anything from me that's not good for me. So just trusting that he knows best. It's kind of like, you know, when a kid wants candy right before dinner or something and you say, no, you can't have that. It's not that, you know, it's going to ruin their dinner. They might be able to have it later and that would benefit them more after they have some protein and other good things in their body before absorbing all that sugar, right? So <laughs> it's kind of that way. We have to understand that God knows when is the right time to give us what we need. Well, and like, and we've spoken many times before, it's like God already sees the tapestry of life. So he already yeah. knows how it all connects and how everything <laughs> comes together. We, we're just seeing that one particular moment. And for us, it's like, well, if it doesn't work out this way, then it's not going to work out or God's not going to be here. But he, God's already thought, you know, like he's already four dimensional chess. He's got six steps ahead of you. 
And, and I think that's where the whole, you know, obedience and just walking in obedience and faith comes in. So many times we don't understand it, which we're not meant to, but, you know, God loves faith and he loves obedience. So sometimes we have to just do that. And, and that's the situation. I was reading you, when I was reading through this, Mama Jack, there was the, this, uh, it says a close friend of mine had a vision of mighty warrior angels lined up along the precip of heaven. This heavenly, this heavenly army was battle ready, waiting for the signal to bring heaven to earth. Yeah. Sounds so familiar, Mama Jane. I know, and it really should, Chad. And I'll tell you why in a minute for our listeners. I'm going to let them in on an inside scoop. But the next part of the scripture says, Oh, Lord of the armies of heaven, blessed are those who trust in you. And so when I was reading that scripture and writing this uh, devotional book, I remembered this wonderful vision that God gave me about a year ago or so. Maybe you could share that with everybody. What was happening at that time? I think you were in a spin class or something. <laughs> and all of a sudden, everything just opened up to you. So explain that to us. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly where it was, but I had this uh, this vision where, you know, there was basically looking up and you have the clouds and it's kind of like everyone, you have all these clouds up there and all this army it's like the Lord's army was all literally sitting there, like with their feet hanging off the cloud, off the edge. And there were just thousands of them, like this massive, massive army. And it was all like encircling around us. And they were all just sitting there, fully geared up, ready for war. And then you had God, you had Jesus, who was this mighty, mighty warrior angel standing there. And basically they were all just looking at him, waiting for them to give the signal so they could just drop down. And then I even had this vision. They didn't actually drop down, but I had a vision of how they looked when they dropped down. Just swarms of just dropping down. It was amazing. It was incredible. That's awesome. That's such a good picture to remember. And I'm glad that you shared that with our Epic Conquerors because we have to always remember it's just like Elijah and Elisha when uh, Elijah, Elisha was concerned that they were up against an army that they couldn't handle. And Elisha said to the Lord, open his eyes so he can see that there's more with us uh, than he, he sees in the natural. And so the Lord gave him a vision similar to that, you know, that there's this vast army of angels. We're not by ourselves, you know, God's got us. I, and I think that's, that's the most important takeaway from that whole thing is sometimes God opens and I can't remember the exact details of what was happening, but I know there was, there was a lot going on at that time. And some, like you said, God sometimes just peels back the scales from your eyes, just so you can have a, get a glimpse of that vision to realize like what you just said, there's armies of angels waiting to come down and help you and to, you know, you just have to call out their name. So you, like you said, you're not alone. It's yeah. just a matter of reaching out. And in the days that we're living in these last days, we understand too, that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and there's going to be earthquakes and famines and this and that and the other. I mean, the scripture really spells it out there very clearly in 2 Timothy chapter 3 for one and Matthew 28 and other places like that of all the birth pangs that we're going to go through before the return of Christ. And so we're definitely accelerating towards that time. So the birth pangs are getting closer and closer and closer. But just like the vision that God showed you, this is not taking God by surprise. I mean, he's already had it written in the scripture, everything from eons ago. So he's like, well aware. It's like, we don't have to be a nervous Nelly because God's definitely not nervous. He's not sitting on his throne, tapping his fingers like, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You know, <laughs> like, he knows exactly that split second timing to deliver us from all the various things that we're involved in. Our only requirement, Chad, this is how simple it gets. Our only requirement is to trust him and believe in him that he's got us and then carry on and do yeah. love others and, and do all the things he's told us to do and be busy with that rather than worrying, anxiety, stressing out, you know, fear mongering, all these other things that the world's message is trying to produce in us. Well, I think, I think the, the problem with that, Mama Jay, is like you said, it's, it's, that's why it's so important to find that peace that we spoke of, because the world's message is like constantly surrounding you. It's bombarding you. I mean, you can't, I mean, wherever you go, you're hearing that message. And that's part of what they want to do, right? The fear factor that creates paralysis. And when you have that paralysis, you can't really focus on how you want to 
you know, move forward or move in faith or whatever. You're just living in fear. And I think that's unfortunately what their whole narrative is right now. But I mean, when I read through Timothy, to, uh, 2 Timothy, oh my goodness. Wow. I mean, that is like, you know, New York Times and 2 Timothy. <laughs> it's like, this is happening right now. This was written thousands of years ago. This was written yesterday. And these two things are happening. It's incredible yeah. how we have... How, you know, biblical prophecy and just the word of God and that is so real and alive every single day. Yeah. And allow that knowledge then to build our faith, right? That God mm -hmm. is not taken off guard by any of this. He already told you it was going to happen. He looked down through the hallway of time. He can redeem the times in our lives where we've had situations happen because he's not subject to time. And that's yeah. how awesome our God is. And when we leave this earth, we won't be subject to time anymore either. But when he looks down the hallway of time, he knows exactly what's going to happen when, and he's not taken by surprise by any of it. So that's, he's trying to comfort us throughout the scripture. Don't be afraid. Trust me. I got you. I'm your mm -hmm. sun and shield. I'm your protector. I'm the light that's going to shine the way for you to go. And we just have to keep our eyes focused on him. I think that's what is, I mean, today it's so important that we spend so much time reading the word. So, you know, I encourage all our conquerors, get back into the word, read it, because none of the stuff that's happening today, it's, it's all already spoken of inside the word and God's already gone through it. He's already told us it's going to happen. And by reading it, like you said, Mama J, it reinforces our faith to yeah. walk through the situation because, I mean, it can get scary. You look around, you're like, wow, you, know, you don't know what to do or how, where to turn or all the rest of it. But if you actually just dive into the word and you let it saturate you, you'll realize that none of this is new. This is all happening. God already saw it coming. So he's already saying, let me tell you how I'm going to get you through that. It's just focus on me. Yeah. And let your me eyes on me. my grace and my glory. <laughs> grace and my glory. And I'm going to take you right through this. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know, when they were stoning Stephen and uh, in the book of Acts there, and he, he looked up to heaven and he just committed his spirit. But I just, sense that in a time like that even if you're in a situation like that then the presence of god is on you in such a tangible way you're not it's like holy ghost anesthesia or something you're not even aware that you're getting pummeled by rocks let's say you know because the presence yeah. of god is there your spirit is already getting released so we don't have to fear death death where is your sting you know there is no sting for us who are in christ and, uh, you know, there's so many things that we could talk about on that. And we'll do a couple episodes on grief and loss and all those things that we go through, because we, we have to have this understanding as Christians that there is no sting to death. Um, we only have God's glory and his presence to look forward mm -hmm. to. So, yeah. Well, and I think that's, that's what's been made it so difficult. People have become so materialistic and so attached to their earthly possessions that death has become such a scary factor for them. And that is, and that's kind of created separation between them and God. And when you create, like you said, when you create that separation, you create despair, fear, and all the rest of those emotions that come rushing in. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually our ultimate goal, right? <laughs> to be with him. So uh, yes. It's like a win-win. It's like, yeah. we get there. Yay. <laughs> We do the best we can down here. We do everything we can, but ultimately we're going to go and celebrate in heaven. It's like, That's yes, right. hallelujah, right. get me there. So what did Paul or yeah, tell Timothy to do in the midst of all the things that he wrote in 2 Timothy? Um, he told him then to be prepared in season and out. So whether it's convenient or not, or it fits with our uh, timeline or not, we feel like it or not. <laughs> We're to be constant being doers of the word of God, not just mm -hmm. hearers only. Because if we're just hearers only, we're building our house on the sand. And when the storms of life come, it's going to crash. But if yeah. we're doers of the word, we're building our house on the rock. And when the storms come, which they will, we'll still be standing solid, firmly fixed on the rock, Christ Jesus. And I think, Paul, I mean, the Paul is such a great example of that because he was so consistent to everything that he went through, regardless of the situation. I mean, he went through all kinds of, and, and we can look at that. He went through good times, bad times, and really, really ugly times, but he was consistent. You know, his faith, his faith wasn't shaken. He constantly kept believing in God and he just walked through that process. And, and I mean, that's really what we need to do because 
at the end of the day, all that outside and all the outside noise and all the events that are taking place, we have no control over that. The only thing we can control is ourselves That's and our faith. Right. That's right. And so you see from his life how he walked in grace upon grace upon grace upon grace to give him the empowerment, the ability to handle all the things that he endured for the cause of Christ. And so we're going to have persecution. The scripture talks about that. We're having it to some degree now, but in other places, they're having it in a great degree. But whatever degree we're going to have it in, there will be persecution coming because of our faith in Christ. But let us receive the grace and glory that God has available for us and go from grace to grace to grace and from glory to glory and faith to faith and strength to strength. And let's watch how God delivers us in the times of peril. Amen. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited, Mama Jay. I think we're about to see, like, we're really about to see the book of Acts being, like, carry on right now. We're going to see the miracles. We're going to see, we, we're going to see, you know, the power of God move in ways that we haven't seen in a long, long time. Well, because people's hearts will be failing them for fear. And so when we come in with the faith and the boldness of Christ, and we speak the word to them, and they're healed or set free or or whatever all the Lord's going to do. We don't all know. I mean, it's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Well, I think we're at that point right now where we have to pivot, unfortunately, and move on to spiritual, weapon. spiritual weapon. What are you going to do? Spiritual weapon. <laughs> the spiritual weapon. Yep. I'm going to choose the spiritual weapon of humility because to me, we have to humble ourselves to receive all this wonderful blessing that God has for us. Because mm. sometimes we're too big for our britches and we think, I got this, I don't need you, God, until, you know, the trauma comes. But it takes humility to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and receive from him all that we need to get through life. So that's I like that. my weapon. I got, I got the other side of that sword for you today, Mom Jay, what? which is obedience. Yes. You got it. it. It's all, it comes down to obedience. Yes. Like if you don't obey God's word or you don't listen, then when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you don't act. Well, then you can't look back and go, well, why is this happening to me? He's like, well, I just told you to go that way. And you went this way. Hello. <laughs> That's right. And there it takes humility to be obedient, to do things that are opposed to our own, what we think should be done. So that is a wonderful two-edged sword. I love it. Yeah. Now we come to our power affirmation. Oh, my goodness. I think we need to say I live in God's grace and glory. I love that. I am an obedient good. warrior of Christ. Ooh, both of those are good. I'm an obedient <laughs> warrior of Christ. And I live in God's grace and glory. Let's put I mean, they both are good. And they actually go together. Well, I'm an obedient warrior of Christ. And because of that, I live in God's grace. All right. I'm going to let you start this drum roll and do all that. Come on, Jeff. You can do it. All right. Well, you know how we do this, everyone, wherever you are, drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. I am an obedient warrior. I'm an obedient warrior. Of Christ. Of Christ. Who lives in. And I live in God's, God's grace. grace and glory. Glory. I'm an obedient warrior of Christ and I live in God's grace and glory. Yes, and amen. That you know, um, the. Hebrew word for one of God's characteristics is Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Yes. And that title of God, of one of his many titles, is found in Genesis 22, 14, where Abraham was required of God in obedience, and he had to humble himself to be obedient, to offer his son as a sacrifice, his son that he believed God for for years, his faith project. God was asking him to sacrifice that unto him to demonstrate his love for God was more than his love for his promised son that he believed for for so long. And the Lord provided a ram in the thicket and said, no, you proved your humility, you proved your obedience, you proved your love for me. I provided the sacrifice. And I think that um, all of us have times in our life where it seems that provision is not coming. Mm -hmm. And we just call upon the name of the Lord. His name is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord. Jehovah who Jireh. Another way of saying it is the God who sees ahead 
and makes provision. So he's already looking down the road to know what you're going to need when you get there. And he's already got the thing in progress to work so that when you actually need it, need it, it's there. The Lord will provide. So that's an encouragement for our Epic Conqueror listeners today. Whatever you're facing today, the Lord will provide. He is Jehovah Jireh. And he's got rams in the thicket for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite names for, for the Lord, Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. So amazing. It's awesome. Well, Mama Jay, that was another great episode. I hope our Epic Conqueror community got a lot out of that. Um, and uh, we look forward to picking up the next one real soon. Yeah. In the meantime. In the meantime, sure. I'm going to say thank you to all of our Epic Conquerors for sharing with your friends. Have them join us on our Facebook group, Epic Conquerors. Uh, I completed my sabbatical season just recently and began doing Facebook Lives in there again. So I'm encouraging you all to jump into our group and get active in there again. And let's just do this thing because the day and the hour has come where we're going to need to walk in more and more of his grace and glory to accomplish the exploits that he's got. Um, coming around the corner here for us and prepare ourselves for what's what's ahead yeah. we don't even know what that is but yeah. now's you know now's the time to do the preparation yeah get the community going you know find find those people that you can that you can align yourself with and uh and um yeah let's yeah. get going let's get we, busy with god's business want to bless our epic conquerors thank you guys we love you so much be blessed have an amazing rest of your day yep months whatever it is <laughs> Wherever you are. Be blessed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.